It's simple. If you actually want to get ahead of 99% of YouTubers in the world, then you need to do things the 99% of small channels are not doing. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but here's the thing. There are like 11 zillion videos out there about how to get more views and subscribers on YouTube. But if you go down to the comment sections of these videos, you'll notice almost 99% of the viewers of these videos are still struggling to grow their channels. So what's the problem? Are these tutorials all just dog crap? Not necessarily, but a massive problem I've noticed is it seems Seems like a lot of these YouTube education videos just assume that you're already following a fundamental rule of YouTube. And even though it sounds cliche as hell, I'm not exaggerating when I say this rule is so important. If your channel doesn't abide by it, pretty much everything else you do won't work. And this isn't just some random concept I made up to farm watch time. It's something I learned from an ex-YouTube employee and interestingly, recently I noticed it's also something that's followed by many of the world's most successful investors. See, lately I've been listening to some investing podcasts and I've noticed hmm. something interesting. The good investors talk a lot about investing in industries or markets. For example, they might talk about how the real estate market is starting to boom in Australia and they're looking to get exposure to it. Or they might talk about how the electric vehicles market is growing significantly and they want to get in on it. And when you think about it, this makes sense because any decent business can grow and profit substantially if it has amazing market conditions. And so when you invest in a business that smashes bang in the middle of a market that's going up and up, chances are that business is going to grow and profit a lot. Warren Buffett summed this up perfectly when he said, it's far more important to be in the right boat than to be rowing hard. But let's get practical for a minute. How does this rule apply to YouTube and practically lead to you getting ahead of 99% of people and generating more traffic than Mumbai at rush hour. Well, recently I was talking to an ex-YouTube employee and he said you should think about this like a quadrant. Essentially, this quadrant summarizes the principle of supply and demand. And the most profitable businesses and most successful YouTube channels are in niches where there's a high demand for their content. In other words, lots of people want to watch that type of content. And there also tends to be, at least in the very beginning, a very low supply. In other words, very few people are creating similar similar types of content. And the problem I would estimate 99% of YouTubers struggle with is that they're creating videos in this part of the quadrant. There's a lot of demand for that type of content. There's a lot of people who want to watch it, but there's a huge amount of supply. There are a lot of people creating that type of content as well. Many of them are probably big YouTubers with very high quality content, titles, and thumbnails. And so what happens is essentially all the videos up here from small YouTubers, they just get swamped and don't get seen by anyone. Because while there is a lot of attention in that niche, the demand is already being satisfied by the existing supply. Apply. In other words, there are already YouTubers who are putting out very high quality videos with great ideas, thumbnails and titles. And so unless you can be significantly better than them, there's no reason for YouTube to promote your video to people. Now it can be possible to take over in a niche that has high demand and high supply, but your content has to be noticeably better than all of the big players who are already out there. And in many cases, especially as a new YouTuber who might still be learning and experimenting, building your skills, finding your voice, it's incredible incredibly difficult to do. And so what a lot of these people end up doing is they either quit or they end up going all the way down here they find a very specific, highly niched type of content and they start creating videos about that. Now down here, supply is low. In other words, they have very little competition, which is great. The problem is often the demand is also low. In other words, there are very few, if any people who want to watch this type of content. And this leads to the same problem. Either these guys don't get views or maybe they get a small amount of views, but it's so small that they're never able to scale and grow what many people would consider to be a highly successful channel. And so as a small creator, where you want to end up is up here. You want to be creating videos in this corner of the quadrant. In other words, there's a very low supply. So there's not an overwhelming amount of other YouTubers posting the same content as you at a very high level. But there are plenty of people who still want to watch this type of content. And so if you're currently one of the 99%, but no matter what you do or try, your videos just don't get views. You might be over here in the top right hand side of the quadrant or down here in the bottom left hand side of the quadrant. And this is why finding your niche is so important and something I harp on about so much. Again, it's more important that you're in the right boat 
than it is for you to be just rowing hard. This channel you're watching right now is a perfect example of this. If you watch some of my old videos, part of me doesn't, doesn't want you to do that. that. You'll see that they're terrible. Pretty much I'd turn on my microphone, start talking, chuck some gameplay over the top and that's it. And yet within a couple of months of starting this channel, I was getting a very significant amount of views and subscribers. Not because my content was phenomenally good, simply because there are a substantial number of people on YouTube who wanted to be gaming YouTubers. And yet at the time, I think there were like literally two other channels that had created content teaching gaming YouTubers how to get views and subscribers. And most of the content on those channels was actually more focused towards streamers. And so essentially the point of this video is like investors, I want you to consider taking a market first approach. It's usually more important to be creating videos about the right thing. And then after that, you can worry about the specific titles and thumbnails. But here are some kind of quick questions that you can ask yourself to vet whether or not a particular YouTube niche is something you might want to try creating content for. First thing, do the research, figure out are there creators posting pretty average content, pretty average thumbnails, yet getting a significant amount of views on their videos. It's just Google it, go through it manually on YouTube and notice, are there creators who post pretty average content or pretty average thumbnails yet get significant amounts of views? If so, that's a good sign because it means there's a high demand for that content. In fact, it's high enough that they're willing to click on and watch a pretty average video. And if you came into that niche and started creating great videos, that demand in those viewers would eventually shift to watching your content. Another sign to look for is, is the niche or market you're exploring new? Usually if something's existed for a long period of time, but no one's managed to succeed in that niche, then it's not a good niche because there's not that much demand. Or if something's been around for a long time and has been successful, and there are a lot of successful creators in that niche, then it's too late for you to establish yourself because the demand's already been satisfied by the supply. But in the case of brand new markets, you can sometimes take the first move as advantage and get ahead. An example of a huge new market that might have popped up recently would be the chat GPT slash AI space. 12 months ago, hardly anyone was talking about chat GPT. Now it's a household name. If you were one of the first creators posting chat GPT videos and tutorials on YouTube and you were consistent about it and your videos and thumbnails and tires were pretty good, I'd be willing to bet your channel would be doing pretty damn well by now. Now some negative things and red flags you want to look for, if there's more than five established very large creators regularly posting high quality content in the niche you're exploring, then sometimes that might be challenging to break into because often these very large established creators are full-time. They can put out multiple videos a week, sometimes multiple videos a day, and it's gonna be really hard for you to match that deluge of content, especially when it's so high quality. Now five is somewhat arbitrary, but I wanted to make this as practical as I could for you guys. So I kind of had to draw a line somewhere, you know? Now, if you think that you could create significantly better videos, titles and thumbnails, than those top creators, then that might be an opportunity. But if the idea of that is intimidating, not a good sign. Another bad sign is when you discover a niche with uh, large creators putting out very good videos, and yet those videos don't get many views at all. Because what that tends to mean is that the demand for that content is quite low or is going down. And so getting into a space like that could be the equivalent of jumping on a sinking ship. Now, I hope that was helpful for you, but if you wanna go more in depth on research, I have a 25 minute video where I go pretty damn in depth on how to use a specific tool to find high demand, low supply keywords that you can create videos for and get tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of views. And that exact same method with a few tweaks can also sometimes be used to uncover exciting new markets or niches to explore that fall into the top left-hand side of this quadrant. So that video is on screen, check it out now.